President Trump said to be getting close to an executive order on policing standards. Word is he wants to team up social workers with law enforcement. And this comes nearly three weeks of protests, the toppling of Confederate-era monuments, unrest all across the nation. And we bring in political insider Armstrong Williams as our regular Friday contributor today to discuss this and more. Good morning to you, Armstrong. So we're also seeing lawmakers respond to the protest. They've got emergency legislation that's moving through Capitol Hill in D.C. Uh, there are policing reforms there. They're banning chokeholds and the use of pepper spray to disperse crowds. Talk about what we are seeing going on in the wake of the impact of George Floyd's death. It, it, the good news is, is probably this, Melanie, is that you've had enough of these violent situations where disproportionately uh, many black youth and adults have died for no reason at all, that I think that it's without any doubt that law enforcement officers, legislatures, and the White House and city officials around the country has a clear idea of what needs to change. You have to ask your question, um, why were this, why was it, it, it implemented a long time ago? Why do you allow law enforcement officers who have 17 infractions like Derek Dauphin to keep serving and continue to be moved from one jurisdiction to the next? Do you expect that behavior to change? No, that, that kind of behavior is only going to get worse. I mean, I don't think anybody should place in a chokehold. I don't think anybody should have their knee, uh, the law enforcement knee on somebody's neck. And that is why we've got to do a better job of vetting these law enforcement officers and not protect them. Protect them. You've got to be slow to hire, slow to hire, you got to do the vetting, and quick to fire. Immediately when you begin to see a pattern of this kind of behavior, it's necessary that you cleanse this cancer from that police force. Because if it doesn't, if you don't, that behavior is only going to get worse because you become its enabler and this continues. Because think about this, Melanie, even as we have in this conversation, even with the protests and the violence and everything else, these situations continue to happen. It's as if the police officers, these rogue cops, did not get the memo. People are still being abused. Some pe people are still dying. And you ask yourself, this is so flagrant, what is going on? You've got to also, as you put these policies in place, it's up to the individual. Because when they're in these situations where they feel threatened or insecure, are they going to go to what saves them, which is the most violent of the of the, what they have, whether it's the knee, whether it's the gun, whether it's the baton, whether it's the taser, you just don't know. You can put all the policies in place, but until you're in that real life situation, I don't think that a lot's going to change over time unless there's a self examination of the individual. And what about, you know, it's not just policing reforms that are needed. I mean, there are reforms elsewhere, too, that we could use in areas such as uh, health care and education. Um, so do you see this movement as taking on a wider, uh, wider impact? You know, it's an interesting thing. That's a very good point that you bring up, because I, I, I would like to believe that this is more than just about police grievances and the, the outrageous behavior Bodies, officers. I mean, part of this is about mental health. Part of this is about the stability of the family and opportunities and whether the government is doing more to create real capitalism in America where people who are in the poverty and whether millennials will have the opportunity to the American dream to come out of out of their places of struggling and debt into the middle class and then ultimately into the wealth class. Because capitalism really doesn't work, Melody, unless you create across the board people with opportunities so they create those opportunities for others. So this should be a across the board issue that we should discuss, not just law enforcement officers, but, but our institutions that ourselves. Look at what Apple did yesterday. Apple decided that it needed to increase diversity on its board. A lot of these corporations and institutions are looking inward, and colleges and universities are the same when they look at their professors, when they look at the corporate structure, whether it's law or medicine. But we should not hire someone because they are minority, because they're white, because they're black, because they're Latino. There are people out there who are so educated and have the experience. We've got enough pool of people in the applicant pool that you can hire who are more than qualified for these positions. So I don't want people to think that other institutions are being marginalized because we're hiring people based on emotions not based on qualifications. All right, we'll have to leave it there as we are out of time. Good to talk to you today. Armstrong Williams, and you can watch The Armstrong Williams Show. It airs every Saturday morning at 10.30 right here on WJLA 24-7 News. And we'll be back.